North Carolinians are not strangers to picking up the pieces following a hurricane. So it's no wonder they were some of the first volunteers to head north after Hurricane Sandy slammed into the Northeast two weeks ago. This week, WRL will bring you their stories. The stories of North Carolinians rolling up their sleeves and helping strangers rebuild their lives after one of the most devastating natural disasters this country has ever seen. We begin in Island Park, New York, where Amanda Lamb caught up with Franklin Graham's relief group, Samaritan's Purse. Life literally stopped for people in Island Park, New York, two weeks ago when Hurricane Sandy came ashore. How much water was in your house? Uh, about three and a half feet. And when you came in and saw? It was, it was unbelievable, worse than I could ever imagine. I mean, you couldn't prepare for a storm like this. When you walk through the devastation of someone's home and you see things like drywall, insulation, personal items like movies and photographs, it's hard to imagine surviving something like this. But this homeowner tells WRAL he's got an army of angels on his side. One, two, three, three, two! The angels work for Samaritan's Purse. They recruit thousands of volunteers from all over the country. You see these images on the news, but to be able to be here and actually physically do something, that's yeah. got to feel good. It does feel good. I truly feel like they bless me more than I bless them today. You can see it's all piled up behind me. You know, they, they've worked all day with me you know, on the house, and they're, and they're like, they're tires. Honestly, you know, they just work and work. There's a lot of North Carolinians that are here in New York. Tim Haas of Raleigh is the U.S. Disaster Relief Manager for Samaritan's Purse. He tells us the outpouring of volunteerism has been overwhelming, but that will change as the weather gets colder. We're just trying to, to get as many people out on sites as we can to make a difference for people while we can. What a difference they're making. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and glorify your holy name for this day, O oh Lord. You want to stay here? Yes. I've been here since uh, 1964, so I'm not looking to leave. This is home. This is home, Island Park. I told this group that this is addictive. It's highly addictive. When you help somebody like this and you make such a difference in their lives, you just want to do it again and again. You've blessed us by letting us come into your home. Amanda Lamb, WREL News. Island Park, New York. At first glance, it looks like a bomb was dropped on Breezy Point, New York. I mean, just looking out at this, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, the destruction is terrible. You know, honestly, my thoughts and prayers are with everyone here. Marines from Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina, have put those thoughts and prayers into action, helping homeowners get rid of water and debris left behind by Hurricane Sandy. In addition to the hurricane damage, people here in Breezy Point lost more than 100 homes due to a fire that started during the storm. People here say it will take years to rebuild. You can look and say, give me an example. This is Keith and Beth's house. Next to Keith and Beth was my friend Maureen and Frank Fowl. In fact, Frank had that house since he was two years old. 73-year-old Marcella McGovern knows who owned every house that burned down around her. They took charge. They knew what, what to do. McGovern tells us the help from the military has been overwhelming. What does it feel like when you see all these people in uniform helping? I, I, I just, what America is to be like, I mean, it just, Really, I didn't realize that it would be so in mass of human help. Pumped out the homes in the standing water that, that was preventing a lot of work from being done. Sergeant Edward Ramlau says it's hard to put into words what it means to be part of the relief effort. It feels good to uh, give a helping hand to those who need it. And we're all motivated to be here and we're all proud of what we've done. You know, National Guard has been here. I mean, it'll take time, but you know, if, if anything, the people from New York, New Jersey, the tri-state area are strong. I mean, they're going to rebound from this. You stand in total shock. You have no, you just do not know which direction to go in. McGovern says she has no doubt about this. I'm coping with family, friends, and you know, faith. The church is always there. Amanda Lamb, WRAL News, Breezy Point, New York. When you see pictures of what Hurricane Sandy did to Breezy Point, New York, it's hard to imagine such devastation happening to people you love. Over $5,000. But for Tara Navarro, a teacher at St. Mary Magdalene in Apex, the devastation hits close to home. And just to see that, it's the place where 
I grew up my whole life going to the beach. We have 20 different families that were related to in Breezy Point. Navarro says all of her relatives in Breezy Point lost their homes or had their homes severely damaged. But it's tough being here with all my family You're in so Breezy far Point. Away. Right. Yeah. And this was actually the picture of uh, my wife's mother's house. Navarro's uncle, Gary Tully's home, was one of 2,800 affected. You can see the water came up to here, which is about eight feet high. Tully's home is still standing, but he's more worried about what this will mean for the future of his community. What's so hard to deal with is the uncertainty of what's going to happen. There's just been so many people that have come to me and said, how can we help? What can we do? And they are helping. Students at Navarro's school collected 310 blankets and more than $5,000 for the hurricane victims. The fundraiser is aimed at showing the kids that it's important to help people whether they're in your community or here in the Northeast. We learned that it's important that everyone comes together as a community and helps people to get better because a lot of innocent people were hurt. Just knowing that you help somebody just makes you feel good. I'm just overwhelmed by everybody's compassion, overwhelmed by everybody's kindness and generosity. And so is Navarro's family. Incidents and catastrophes like these shrink our country dramatically, shrink the world dramatically. What makes you feel good is, is it connects young children at a young age to uh, uh, some of the realities of, of the world we live in. In Toms River, New Jersey, in the wake of Hurricane Sandy, progress sounds like this. And it looks like this. A crew in yellow representing the North Carolina Baptist men from Cary. And they just come in and just do it. They just do it. They just do it. They just... No questions asked. Nope. Nope. Strangers. They ask you if you need help, and they help you. Lee Spilner's 80-year-old mother's house was flooded in the storm. These volunteers are gutting it for her so she can rebuild. Volunteers like Winslow Thornton, whose mother lost her home in New Orleans after Katrina. I understand the loss. I understand the loss. And so I wanted to come up and uh, you know, do what we can to, to lift their spirits and help them out. It's a monumental effort. The North Carolina Baptist men have set up a mini city here in Toms River, New Jersey. They have everything they need to help people from food to fuel to water, even a laundry facility. Did you say the fuel truck was out there? Jimmy Lawrence is a relief manager from Rockingham County who is helping oversee the recovery in Tom's River. How many people can you feed? Uh, I think the most is fed out here is 12 or 13,000 in a day. Whether they're feeding, cleaning out, or consoling, these volunteers say they can't help but being moved by what they're seeing. This is New Jersey's Katrina. There is just devastation everywhere. I get emotional about it. And the volunteers aren't the only ones who are emotional. God bless you. We love you. And if I keep talking, I'm going to cry because <laughs> that's how much I feel for those people that are, that are helping everyone, not just us, everyone. Amanda Lamb, WRAL News, Toms River, New Jersey.